With Kelvin's Arctic Beam now confirming and denying souls, Viscus getting a major weapon rework, and Shiv facing significant nerfs to his damage and durability, the Deadlock team swung for the fences this patch. In this patch breakdown, I'll be going over the various map, item, and balance changes we saw in the August 29th update. If you want to see where all your favorite heroes rank in our patch tier list, get subscribed for when that video drops on Saturday. Now let's begin with the map and general gameplay changes. With this patch, they've added the ability to wall jump a single time without consuming any stamina, opening up quite a few pathways that required a double jump previously. In order to activate the wall jump successfully, it requires your input direction to be away from the wall. In addition, the team has added some ropes to access the previously added rooftop locations spread around the map. In order to climb them, you'll need to hold your jump key similar to the zip lines. In addition, while on these ropes, you'll be able to shoot enemies nearby and climb up at the same time. They've also switched up the locations of some of the teleporters and added a new one as well. These teleporters open up the ability to travel across the map at a moment's notice, especially the new teleporter taking you from yellow all the way across the map to purple. But the new change is that the teleporters will only become active once you've reached the 10 minute point of a match. Now let's move on to some objective and breakable changes. Regarding objectives, the lane guardians will no longer grant you an ability point when killed. This is because the number of ability points you get as you level has been increased. They've also increased the tier 2 walker's minimum attack range by 2 meters, going from 30 to 32. For the golden statue breakables, you'll now have a higher chance to receive a reward, with the drop rate being increased by 6%. They've now also included some pathways where ropes have been added to get to areas where you previously had to jump across rooftops to access. There have also been numerous cosmetic changes around the map to help players understand where they are more consistently. One of the examples is making the tunnel walls colored so you know which way you're exiting. Now let's talk about the new addition to the arsenal with a tier 3 weapon item called Headhunter. Headhunter is a new item that requires high velocity mag to build it. It grants 50% bullet velocity, 15% weapon damage, and 150 health bullet shield. But the real power lies in its passive effect. Landing a headshot on heroes deals a bonus 140 damage and heals you for 8% of your maximum HP. Also when this effect goes off, it grants you a 2 meter per second movement speed buff for 3 seconds. With a cooldown of just 6 seconds total, this item is going to be a game changer for precision players. Now let's dive into the latest hero changes, where we've seen a mix of buffs, nerfs, and some interesting adjustments that are sure to impact how these heroes perform in the current meta. Abram's re Infernal Resilience Regeneration Time is increased from 16 seconds to 18 seconds, meaning it takes him a little bit longer to recover, but in a fun twist, Abrams can now do pull-ups on the zipline again, giving him a little extra flair while navigating the map. Bebop saw some notable updates, with his gun range increased from 30 meters to 32 meters, allowing him to engage from even safer than he already could. Additionally, his hook now defaults to targeting enemies, but you can switch it to ally-only mode with the alternate cast. Additionally, you can also cancel hyperbeam by using the parry key, adding a new layer of control to his kit. Dynamo is getting hit with a few nerfs this time around. His gun damage was reduced from 15 to 13, and the cast time for Singularity was increased from 0.1 second to 0.2 seconds, with its range also being reduced from 9 meters to 8. These changes will make Dynamo a little bit less effective at dishing on damage and controlling the battlefield, but I don't expect him to fall too far on the meta. Grey Talon faced several nerfs this patch. The collision size of his charged shot was reduced by 8%, and its base damage dropped from 105 to 100. The tier 2 upgrade also took a hit, with its bonus being reduced from 70 to 65 additional damage. Additionally, Great Talon's fire rate now scales with Spirit at a rate of 0.25%, which will require players to adjust their builds accordingly. However, he can now use multiple air dashes while using Rain of Fire, adding some extra mobility while he's in the air. His immobilizing trap was also adjusted, with the root duration reduced from 2 seconds to 1.25 seconds, but it now applies a 50% movement slow for 1 second after the root ends, still giving Great Talon some time to land those shots. The tier 2 upgrade for Immobilizing Trap was changed from an additional second of the root to an additional 2 seconds of the slow after the root, which may shift how players utilize this ability. Haze has actually received a few buffs to her offensive capabilities this time around. Her base bullet damage was increased from 5.3 to 5.6, making her more lethal in ranged engagements early on in the game. Her Sleep Dagger now deals impact damage immediately, with the drowsy period before sleep kicks in slightly increased from 0.25 seconds to 0.35 seconds. The cooldown for Sleep Dagger has also been reduced from 27 seconds to 25 seconds, allowing for a slightly more frequent use. For Haze's Smoke Bomb, the radius was reduced from 20 meters to 18 meters, 
But on the bright side, Hazus Fixation Tier 2 upgrade now allows for additional stacks, increasing from 30 to 40 additional stacks. And now Bullet Dance also provides plus 2 weapon damage in the base ability, giving it a little bit more punch in combat. Infernus saw a mix of adjustments this patch. The vertical reach of his Flame Dash DPS was reduced, and the speed of Flame Dash is now affected by slows, which may impact his ability to escape or chase down enemies. The Flame Dash Trail now gets wider with ability range bonuses, adding some versatility to the ability. However, the duration of the Flame Dash Tier 1 upgrade was reduced from 7 seconds to 6 seconds. Infernus's Catalyst also saw some changes, with the damage amplification reduced from 30% to 25%. But the tier 3 upgrade for Catalyst now increases damage amplification from 10% to 15%, so it's just shifting around a little bit. Additionally, the Catalyst tier 2 lifesteal was reduced from 20% to 15%, which may require some players to rethink their builds. Ivy received several tweaks aimed at balancing her overall performance. Her bullet damage per boon has been reduced from 0.55 to 0.5, and her health growth per boon was also lowered from 41 to 35, making her slightly less tanky as the game progresses. The tier 2 upgrade of Watcher's Covenant saw a reduction in speed, going from 3 meters per second to 2 meters per second. There's also been a significant change to her ultimate, Airdrop. It no longer silences allies that she's carrying, but it causes allies to deal 50% less damage while being carried. The movement of Airdrop has been adjusted to be less frantic, with its self-cast time increased from 1 second to 2 seconds as well. Ivy's maximum move speed during airdrop has also been reduced from 20 meters to 18, but despite these nerfs, Ivy gained some utility during airdrop flight, as players can now pitch up and down using the dash and crouch buttons. Kelvin received a great buff this patch. His bullet radius has been increased from 5 to 6, making his shots a little bit more forgiving, and his base health growth per boon also went up from 45 to 50, adding some extra tankiness as the game progresses. His arctic beam ability saw multiple changes. The max slow effect has been increased from 60% to 80%, and it now has the ability to affect soul orbs, allowing you to secure or deny them. However, the tier 3 range of arctic beam has been reduced from 15 meters to 13 meters, so you'll need to be a little bit closer to your targets. Lastly, the tier 2 heal for frost grenade has been increased from 135 to 145, giving Kelvin some more healing for himself and allies in fights. Lash only received one change this time around. His grapple ability no longer provides a stamina charge on use, which means it impacts his ability to stay in fights during longer engagements. Pocket received a slight nerf this time around, with the barrage damage amplification being reduced from 8% to 7% per stack, making it a little less potent in dishing out consistent damage. Seven saw some adjustments aiming at balancing out his power. The radius of his static charge was increased from 5 meters to 6 meters, and the tier 2 upgrade now further increases the radius from 7 meters to 8 meters. However, the spirit power scaling for Stormcloud has been reduced from 1.1 to 0.8, meaning it will deal less damage overall with the more spirit you build. To balance this, the time it takes for Stormcloud to reach maximum radius has been reduced from 6 seconds to 3 seconds, and it now provides a 20% bullet resistance in the base ability, adding more defense to Seven's ultimate. Shiv was hit with a series of nerfs that will require some adjustments in playstyle. His bullet damage growth per boon has been reduced from 0.5 to 0.4, and his gun falloff range was decreased by 10%, making him less effective at long ranges. His health growth per boon was also reduced from 41 to 35, reducing his overall durability. The tier 2 upgrade for Slice and Dice has also been nerfed, with its bonus reduced from an extra 100 damage to an extra 85, and the tier 3 upgrade now considers troopers at only half value. Bloodletting's deferred damage was reduced from 35% to 30% at base, and a good quality of life is that the targeting for his ultimate, Killing Blow, has been updated to provide clearer information on when the target can be executed. Vindicta received some minor nerfs, with the duration of stake being reduced from 2.25 seconds to 2 seconds, and the spirit power duration scaling for her Crow Familiar being reduced from 0.05 to 0.04, slightly decreasing her crowd control capabilities and her damage. Viscus underwent a significant rework, particularly with her primary fire, which has been redesigned for better usability and improved damage scaling. She now has an alt fire option that deals AoE damage with limited range but can't headshot, adding versatility to her kit. The spirit scaling for splatter has been increased from 1.4 to 1.5, and the damage on the second and third bounces has been increased from 66% and 33% to 70% and 50%. Puddle Punch has also received several changes, 
Its damage was increased from 100% to 110% of light melee, and the tier 2 upgrade now adds 50 damage and a 20% movement slow. The tier 3 upgrade now reduces the cooldown by 12 seconds, when it previously added damage and a movement slow. The delay before Puddle Punch activates was also increased from 0.25 seconds to 0.35 seconds, allowing for a little bit more counterplay. Additionally, Goo Ball has received multiple buffs. Its spirit scaling was increased from 1.05 to 1.3, its acceleration was increased, and both its base turn radius and turn radius after bouncing have been improved. These changes make Viscous a new formidable presence in matches, especially for players who master her new kit. Warden only received a slight nerf this time around, with a reduction in his base movement speed going from 6.5 to 6, and his fire rate scaling with Spirit has been reduced from 0.375 to just 0.3, making him a bit less deadly. Finally, Yamato saw a few adjustments aimed at fine-tuning her abilities. The max damage time requirement for Power Slash was reduced from 1.5 seconds to 1.4 seconds, making it a bit quicker to reach full damage potential. The collision radius of Power Slash was reduced by 8% though, requiring more precision when landing hits. On the other hand, the radius of Crimson Slash was increased from 12 meters to 13 meters, giving her a bit more reach in combat. And with those changes, that wraps up this patch breakdown. With so many changes to heroes and items, the meta is sure to shift in some exciting ways. I'm excited to hear your thoughts, so let me know down in the comments which updates you liked the most or which you didn't like so much. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to get subscribed for more Deadlock content coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.